Hey everybody, Gage here from Sharp. Excited to have you with me again for another episode of Sharp Knife Shop TV. In today's episode, we're talking about how to build your kit. What knives do you need? How many do you need? Um, what should you get first? What should you get second? Uh, we're gonna discuss all of those things in this video, so stay tuned. So one of the more common questions that we get asked here at the shop is, uh, what sets do you have available? And while we do have sets available, both on our website and in store, that we offer a little discounts on because of the quantity of knives you're picking up, it's not something that we always recommend doing. If you've watched our intro to Japanese knives video, you probably know already that we recommend going with one highly versatile knife as your first chef's knife, um, or should I say first Japanese knife. And then once you understand the uh, limitations and usage um, abilities of that particular knife, you can kind of decide what your knife next knife is going to be. So, uh, like I said, we've discussed what your first knife should be many times before. Uh, so why don't we discuss what your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, maybe even seventh knife should be and why and how you should choose it. In front of me, I have a number of different shapes. Uh, pretty much everything that we offer here in the shop and in terms of the different shapes that we offer. From my right, I've got a sujihiki um, used for slicing. Next being the gyuto, uh, sort of the equivalent to a Japanese chef's knife. Santoku, uh, sort of all-purpose home cook knife. A bunka, very similar to the santoku, just a slightly different shaped tip. The nakiri used more for up and down chopping of vegetables. Petty knives in two different sizes used as sort of just general utility knives for smaller tasks. A deba used for fish butchery and a hanasuki used for poultry butchery and other sort of like land animal butchery. If you've watched again our intro to Japanese knives video, you probably know already that we recommend for your first knife one of the four following knives, either the Gyuto, Santoku, Bunka, or Nakiri. These four shapes are highly, highly versatile knives. The Nakiri being one of the more specialized out of the four here, uh, meant more just for chopping vegetables. But any of these four knives are gonna allow you to do pretty much anything you're gonna come across in the kitchen. After you pick up one of these four knives, what should your next knife be? Now, this is gonna depend on the person and what, what exactly you plan to use the knife for, of course, but generally speaking, we say uh, your next knife should be a petty knife. These guys are a perfect complement to either the Bunka, Nakiri, Santoku, or Gyuto because you're going to find a number of tasks specific to that knife that would be either uh, hard or impossible to achieve with any of the other four knives previously discussed. Petty knives are great, again, for any sort of like smaller tasks that you come across. So taking the tops off strawberries, um, they can even be used for butchery tasks, um, cutting up fruit in the morning, slicing a sandwich in half. Um, basically anything that you don't need a full size knife for, you can do with a petty knife. They're also great for working off the board in your hand with, but of course can be used on the board as well. You'll find them in different sizes and obviously the longer they are, the better they're going to be at slicing. The shorter they are, the little easier it'll be to use for butchery tasks. So now you've got two knives. You've got either a Bunka, Nakiri, Santoku, Gyuto, and a petty knife paired with that. Where do you go with the third one? Well, say you picked up a Gyuto as your first knife and a petty knife as your second knife. What I think makes the most sense is to slot something in between these two knives. Now, what should you slot in between those two knives will depend, again, on what you plan to use the knife for. But generally speaking, we would say any of these three knives, the Bunka, Nakiri, or Santoku, would make sense as your third knife. This is gonna really round you off nicely. You're gonna have something on the larger end in your Gyuto that you can use for slicing or any larger sort of vegetable prep. You've got something on the smaller end in your petty knife for butchery tasks or any really small off the board tasks that you encounter. And now you have a knife sort of in between that you can use for any of those sort of in between jobs you come across. Um, a Nakiri is great if you wanna spread the usage of your knives out so you keep them sharp a little bit longer um, and use specifically for vegetable chopping. If you're working in a professional kitchen and you're doing a lot of like veg prep, julienne vegetables, peppers, um, carrots, all that sort of stuff, uh, a Nakiri would be a great option. Or maybe you're doing a lot of veg work but you're not just doing julienne style cutting, you need, you need the tip of your knife to do something more intricate like a brunoise shallot, uh, a bunka or a santoku is going to be great for that sort of purpose. Now before we get into tasks, 
tactical Pacific ask specific knives. Uh, please go out and spend 30, 40 bucks on a bread knife as your fourth knife. Uh, the Japanese don't make a ton of bread knives. They are out there, um, but we find that it's always difficult to sharpen them. It's always difficult to find someone that can sharpen them for you. Um, and they're an integral part to a Western style ki kitchen, I would say. We eat a lot of bread here, a lot of hard crusty bread. So you need a good uh, bread knife to get through that. And it's probably gonna give you three to five years before it goes dull. And at that point, you can just go out and spend another 30, 40 bucks on another bread knife. Okay, so now we've got three knives in our kit. Where do we go with our fourth one? So obviously the, the theme uh, through the first three knives into your kit has been versatility. Trying to get knives that are not good for just one thing, but can be used for a myriad of different tasks. All of the three knives that, um, or the knives that we've discussed that go into your th three knife kit are all gonna be used for a lot of different tasks and nothing super specific. But on your fourth knife, that's maybe when you can start thinking about more uh, task specific knives. Those are going to include the Honesuke, Deba and Tsujihiki that we discussed earlier. Now, of course, uh, uh, depending on what you plan to use a knife for is going to determine what you go with. So uh, maybe you're working a meat station and you're slicing a lot of steaks and they need to be really, really nice and uh, the Gyuto just isn't cutting it for you anymore. Uh -huh pun intended, uh, that's when you're gonna get out your Sujihiki. Um, these guys are designed specifically for slicing. You've got that nice long slender blade so you can make long drawing strokes and get that perfect slice. They're also great if you're doing a lot of like salmon butchery or something like that, where you're taking big fillets off um, and then just trimming up. I used to use a Sujihiki for that and uh, it really made my life a lot easier. Maybe you're doing um, a lot of fish butchery and you're not slicing a lot of like cooked proteins or something like that. Um, you're doing a lot of like ocean fish that have the, that plate that runs through the middle of them. Um, a deba would be a great option for you as your fourth knife. Uh, a deba is designed specifically for fish butchery. It's got a nice uh, chunky spine on it so that you can go through the, the, the spine and get the head off. Um, the single beveled, uh, style of this knife. It makes it really easy to follow along that, that plate down the middle um, and help you get a really, really good yield when you're breaking down fish and get the most flesh possible off of the fish. So a great fourth option if you're doing a lot of fish butchery. If you're doing just a lot of like sort of general butchery, maybe there's a little bit of fish in there, but primarily you're like breaking down poultry, uh, deboning pork shoulders, taking the silver skin off of tenderloins or any sort of butchery task in that sort of uh, style, the Haneske would be a great fourth knife for you. Um, these guys are a little bit more robust than the petty knife. So while this can be used for butchery, maybe a little bit underpowered for some things that you're gonna come across. Um, so a little bit thicker at the spine gives you a little bit more robustness on this knife knife. The K tip on this guy makes it really easy to get in and around joints and between bones and such. Um, so a Hines K would be a great option for your fourth knife. Okay, so we're at four now. So what do you do with your fifth, sixth, seventh knife should you wanna get that many knives? Well, at this point you are kind of just picking up knives for the sake of buying a new knife, which I am certainly guilty of. I love knives and I love just kind of experimenting with all the different shapes and, uh, and seeing what they can offer me. And um, so when you're getting into your fifth, sixth, seventh knife, um, you're getting into those really task specific specialty knives. And while they, will probably make your life a lot easier because you know being designed for a specific task, they're gonna perform really well at that task. It's certainly not necessary to get that many knives. Again, I would say three to maybe four knives is probably all anyone could possibly need. Um, and when I say need, I mean need. And then you may want knives after that. And while you may get a lot of use out of them, you could probably survive with the three knives um, that we talked about at the beginning of this video. So you have a good idea of what knives you need and in sort of what order. I thought it'd be really fun for us now to do a little exercise where I get to rebuild my knife kit from scratch. So the first knife that I'm picking up if I'm rebuilding my kit is going to be a Gyuto. Now it doesn't ha necessarily have to be this particular Gyuto, th though this is a really beautiful knife, um, but we're just gonna use the examples that we have in front of us here to do this part of the video. So my first knife is gonna be the Gyuto. Uh, super versatile, arguably the most versatile knife in any chef's role. You can do pretty much anything with this knife. Uh, the sort of uh, more 
rocking profile is going to allow you to do a rocking motion. Most Gutos, especially at the 240 size, are going to have a nice flat spot so you can do a lot of up and down chopping with them. Uh, you can slice with them, you can do more intricate stuff with them um, at the tip of the knife. So for my first one, I want something that I can do pretty much anything with and that's going to be the Guto. I would take the 210 size over the 240, but I'll probably add a 240 in down the road here. My second knife is going to be a petty knife. I personally prefer uh, something a little bit shorter. So this is a 120. I would probably go with a 135. I find the 135 petty knife is a really good size because it's uh, short enough that you can use off the board in your hand for any vegetable trimming, uh, but also long enough that you can do a, a good amount of slicing with it. So when I was cooking professionally and working on the grill station, I used to keep a, a petty knife next to me. It was great for slicing, you know, like a chicken breast in half or slicing steaks in half and stuff like that. Um, it's gonna help me with a lot of butchery work as well. Um, um, so yeah, it's going to pair beautifully with my Guto and with these two knives, I'm going to be able to do pretty much anything in the kitchen with the exception of slicing bread. Okay. My third knife is going to be the Bunka. I love this shape. It's one of my favorites. It's probably the one I get the most use out of at home. Um, the Guto though, it can still be used for more intricate things. I do find uh, for myself, it's a little bit more comfortable to do Brunoise shallot and garlic, and I'm a lot faster with something a little bit smaller. Um, so it's gonna help with sort of that, the like smaller, smaller, more intricate veg prep that I'm gonna come across, um, and is going to sort of fill in that middle slot between the Guto and the Petty that I started with. So those are my first three knives. Of course, like we said, my next fourth knife is gonna be a nice $30, $40 bread knife. My personal favorite is the Mercer bread knife. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, great knife, it's really, really good for like the hard crusty stuff. Um, holds their edge for a reasonably uh, long amount of time and they're pretty affordable as well. So my fourth knife is a bread knife. Oh, what do I do next? I do have to be honest. Okay, knife number five, guys. I'm gonna pick this Sujihiki here. Uh, before the pandemic, my girlfriend and I and some of our friends would join us uh, regularly. We would do uh, a steak night once a week. Um, you know, the, the, the piece of meat I would pick up would always change, but chances are I'm going to have to slice it up at the end of cooking it. And I love getting like those really nice, beautiful slices. So uh, Sujihiki, of course, uh, a little bit more specific uh, in terms of what tasks it can be used for. Um, but I'm going to get a lot of use out of this knife slicing steaks. Um, it's also great for, you know, family gatherings when you're doing a roast turkey, maybe roast beef or whatever. Um, so having a nice slicing knife, in my uh, opinion, is, is very important. So um, for my fifth knife, the Sujihiki. Okay, now getting into our sixth knife. So now we're getting into the point where like, I don't really even know what knife I'm gonna pick next. Um, we, you know, I've got pretty much everything that I need now. And though I could add some more knives to my collection here, I, I, I can do pretty much anything I'm gonna come across in the kitchen. With that said, I love the look and um, sort of shape of the Haneske. I think it's a really, really cool looking knife. And again, with our steak knives, I am, or steak knights, I am doing quite a bit of like butchery stuff at home. I also like to pick up a chicken or two at the beginning of the week and break them down, freeze them so that they're ready to go um, for dinners throughout the week. Um, so I'll get a lot of use out of this Haneske, breaking down chickens and doing any sort of like little uh, uh, meat trimming jobs that come up on uh, steak nights. So for my sixth knife, I'm going with the Haneske. So for my, for my seventh knife and the last knife that I would add into one of my kits, I think seven is more than enough, is going to be a single beveled knife of some kind. So that could be either an Asuba, a Deba, which I have in my hand, or a Yanagiba. Um, in any case, at the seventh knife, again, I have everything that I need already. I'm at this point just kind of looking to learn about uh, other Japanese blacksmiths and steel types. I want to learn uh, what it is to use a single beveled knife because they are quite a bit different uh, from using a double beveled knife. I don't do a ton of fish butchery. I probably wouldn't use an Usuba a ton because I would feel more comfortable using a Nakiri. Um, my Yanagiba, uh, Yanagiba probably wouldn't get a ton of use either. We are gonna start making sushi at home, my girlfriend and I, so I could probably use it for that. Uh, but I've already got a Sujihiki, so I'm kind of covered already. Uh, but in any case, a, a single bevel knife to, to round out my kit. I feel like it's a prerequisite for any uh, Japanese knife enthusiast out there. You gotta have one single bevel knife in your kit. 
right? I like that, yeah. yeah. You gotta have one. All right, well, there you have it, guys. That's uh, how to build your knife kit and what seven knives and in what order I would rebuild my kit with. I hope you enjoyed this video. We would love to hear from you guys down in the comments section. Let us know what your first knife was and if you think it was a good choice, would you go back and change what your first knife was? What does your, consi your kit consist of now? And do any of those knives not get any use? And maybe you wanna share with someone, don't buy this particular shape of knife because you'll never use it. Whatever the case is, we love hearing from you guys, so leave a comment down below. Again, really appreciate you guys being here, and until the next video, stay sharp.